Sleep is essential. It's one of the pillars of lifestyle medicine, and it's one most people don't honor. And may I say most clinicians are not honoring it, and we need to. The National Sleep Foundation recommends adults accumulate for sound sleep seven to nine hours per night. It's important. If you're here at Harvard Medical School and you're getting less than six hours and you wanted to be part of a sleep study, you would go in the sleep deprived arm of that study if you're getting less than six hours. So it's really important we take sleep seriously. Why? It has an impact on our health. Sleep insufficiency syndrome. It may become a thing and a diagnosis soon. And why is that? When we have a deficiency in sleep, we're more likely to have high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and mood disorders. So how can we get that seven to nine hours per night? Now, sometimes you're gonna be on call. So your sleep will be disrupted. That's something that's out of our control. Let's talk about when our sleep is in our control, how to set ourselves up for high quality sleep. We can do this by setting our bedroom up to be a cave, dark, cool, and quiet. It really must be dark. You must pay attention and get blackout shades or maybe wear an eye mask if there's any light in your room. It's also important to pay attention to a specific kind of light the light from your computer, the light from the TV, the light from your phone, because this emits blue wavelength light. Blue wavelength light, as you may know, is important to factor in because our pineal gland responds to it. How? When there's blue wavelength light, the pineal gland will not release melatonin. And we know we need melatonin for sleep. Some people take it as pills and supplements, but we can do our best work to allow our pineal gland to release it naturally by not looking at the TV, the screen, the phone, two to three hours before bed. Now, if that sounds completely unreasonable to you, you can get blue wavelength blocking glasses or goggles. You could get an app for your computer or your phone that blocks the blue wavelength light, but it's essential that we take that into consideration. Now the cool in the cave. We said dark, we said quiet, and it's got to be cool. Most people don't realize that a drop in core body temperature is a signal for sleep. So the sweet spot is somewhere between 60 and 70 degrees in your bedroom. 67 degrees is where people recommend you start and see how you do. But you want a cool temperature in your bedroom. Remember that we are shooting for seven to nine hours, weekday and weeknight, about 11 to six, 11 to seven, or if you want, 12 to seven, 12 to eight, but the same during Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This will help your body get into a natural rhythm. Speaking of that, you wanna have sunlight in the morning. You want to get exposure to bright light, sunlight in the morning. That's important to stay on your circadian rhythm. Another factor is you may be fatigued from a very difficult week and maybe you wanna take a nap on the weekend. You can do this, the recommendations are to do this before three o'clock and for only 20, max 30 minutes and then it won't disrupt your sleep. We must also address some other things like caffeine. Caffeine, we use it, we like it, it's got antioxidants, you have it in the morning, it peps you up, revs you up, and you're setting yourself up for an exciting day and morning. That's fine. Here's the problem. If you continue to consume caffeine throughout the day and even past, say, 3 p.m., this can have an impact on your sleep. Why is that? Adenosine builds up throughout the day and by 11 o'clock, it's at a peak, and it's a signal for sleep. Now, most of us don't realize this because we didn't learn it in pharmacology in medical school, but caffeine binds to the same receptor as adenosine. So if you have caffeine, adenosine won't be able to give the signal for sleep because caffeine's binding to the receptor. It's important to know 
the half-life of caffeine is for about four to six hours. This can vary, metabolism can vary, but if you think about that on average, if you're having a cup of coffee or a Diet Coke or tea, whatever is your caffeine drink of choice, if you're having at 3 p.m., at 9 p.m., if it takes six hours for you to get to metabolize half of it, at 9 p.m., then you have half of it in your system and it could disrupt your sleep. If you're having trouble with sleep, think about caffeine. Most recommendations are to have the caffeine in the morning before 10 o'clock, definitely not after two. If you must have one at two, but nothing beyond two o'clock. Now somebody's gonna say, but I have a cappuccino espresso at nine o'clock and I sleep like a baby. Okay, so that's where I say metabolism varies and some people that does work for but they're not complaining about their sleep. So if you're having trouble with sleep, then you may be one of those people that really needs to factor in your caffeine intake. Speaking of chemicals, let's talk about alcohol. Many people will drink alcohol in the evening and some do use it to fall asleep. It can shorten sleep latency, meaning it can help you fall asleep more quickly. Unfortunately, the data reveals that it will disrupt your sleep. You will have less REM sleep and it's important to have REM sleep to feel well rested and to have sound sleep at night. So considering how you're using alcohol is an important part of getting good sound sleep.